Hi there, it's, uh, it's Terry Prim and uh, welcome to my studio. One of the things that I do quite a lot of in my day-to-day -day business is stock photography. And if you ever look at uh, stock libraries, you'll notice that quite a lot of the images have, uh, have a pure white background. And there is a reason for this. Um, it, it means that um, art directors or the end user can actually remove the background and use a background of their choice. So it's a great technique, fairly simple, and it's one that I use quite a lot of. So in this uh, video, I'd like to show you how I do it. Uh, here's, a, here's the image. Let's show you the uh, finished image. Uh, this background is pure white. Um, if you took this into Lightroom and clicks on the clicking path, this entire background would show as a pure white background. And it means that the end user or the uh, designer can very, very easily select this background and remove it or invert the selection and copy the uh, actual product and then stamp it onto whatever background they want to use. So the technique to actually achieve this pure white background or the way that I do it is as follows. Right, first of all, I create a, a shooting table. Now, you, I don't know where you can actually buy one of these clear shooting tables. I've never actually seen one, but uh, you really don't need to because to buy one, it will probably cost you several hundreds of pounds. And quite frankly, there's no need. We we'll start off with just two bulk standard general lighting stands. You know, what I've done, I've actually uh, put a couple of grips around the shaft of the stand so it's sitting down onto the shaft below it. Uh, these are really cheap things that you can buy from any DIY store or B&Qs. What we do then is we place our shooting table on top of the two grips that are on the light stands and then using two more grips we just clamp the whole thing together. Now all this is is a piece of perspex or plexiglass which you can buy off the shelf in a builder's merchants or a DIY shop and all I've done is I've heated it I actually used a, a camping stove I think it was I just heated it along there and then gently bent it to shape and the trick is to do it gently and slowly so as not to burn the product eventually it will get to the shape where you want it and when it cools it will maintain that shape. It's perfect, absolutely perfect for shooting products or objects on. Uh, you can see I've put my two eyeballs on there and the number five. Okay, so let's go back now, to go to the next stage. Oh yes, uh, this is another little technique uh, I use as well quite a lot. This is a piece of A3 foam board attached to a reflector holder. The reflector holder is then attached to the small boom which is attached to a lighting stand which makes the background uh, very very flexible so we can put it anywhere we like uh, to suit. It's actually back there, you can actually see it back there, I've been using it for a shoot um, uh, this morning. Uh, right, uh, let's carry on. Okay, so we've got our shooting table set up. Um, we've got our background there on our little rig. Um, let me just show you what we've done. I've maneuvered the background behind and below the table. The actual camera shot's gonna be from up here down so you can see this background. All right, it's a very, very simple uh, rig set up. Then what we did next, um, we placed the strobe, which uh, is aimed directly at our background there. Let's just bring that up so you can see. Yeah, slightly at an angle. Uh, we obviously, we play around with this and get it into the exact position we want it to be in. And obviously we adjust the power of this light uh, to create our pure white background. And the trick here really is not to overpower it we need to get pure white but we don't want to go too powerful that it starts blowing out our image which is quite an easy mistake to make so experiment with this 
and make sure that you do get your pure white background but don't overdo it okay what we've done here to prevent um, because we got our strobe directly underneath our product in fact slightly in front of and below to avoid the base of the product actually getting blown out with too much light I flagged it with an ordinary black foam board if you don't do this there is a danger that the base of the object uh, may get blown out uh, and it doesn't look too good by putting in this black flag it just kills the light underneath here and um, let me just go back to the ori original image and I'll show you uh, what I mean yeah I think you can just just see from this image there's just a very slight bit of shade under there a bit of darkness and that's coming from that black phone board if we didn't have it there this would be really quite bright and then you wouldn't be able to distinguish uh, the difference between the eyeball and the background okay so it's very important that that's there right let's go back where were we okay that's our background uh, all sorted so what we do now we're going to the actual lighting of the object so let's click on this image what I've done here I've put a diffuser panel to the right of the object and then I've got a strip box which sits behind an, an angle part of the light is above the diffuser and part of the light is below now the reason for this is the top part of this light is exposed and it gives us the little um, uh, highlights in the pupils of the eyes and the bottom part of the soft box is more diffused and that just lights the right hand side of the actual eyeballs uh, let me go back again to the original image just to show you again what I mean uh, you can see from here look that lovely catch light we've got there is coming from the part of the soft box which is above uh, the diffuser panel so it's obviously that much brighter and it's more distinct whereas the bottom part of that strip box is behind the diffuser which gives us a much softer light and basically gives us a nice feel like around the eyeballs okay right let's go back to where we were okay now for the other side of the eyeballs all I've done is I put another small diffuser panel there I've got another strip box behind that I've got this panel at a slight angle and all that's doing really is uh, giving us a feel light to light the other side of the eyeballs and that is basically our setup so all you really need to do is to uh, tweak all your lighting just to make sure that you've got your pure white background without blowing out your product and you've got your um, fill lights both sides of the object and your catch light from from here okay so that's the technique I use there are other ways of doing it um, but this way is fairly simple one of the advantages um, of this technique is you don't you're not restricted to pure white backgrounds you can uh, let's just scroll down a bit um, you can put any color car down here you could change it so you've got a gradient behind here uh, by putting a grid on or oh, you can change you can put a gel on there uh, the variations uh, are enormous you can do pretty much anything but what it does it separates the product uh, from the background there's no shadow or anything there um, which is ideal for product photography all right okay so hopefully that's helped and um, Maybe you can use that in your photography, maybe you do stock photography already, or if you've never done it before, this is a way of doing it. Okay, so hope you've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed it, and I'll speak to you again soon with another little tip or trick. Cheers then, take care. Bye-bye.